Inez. So day two of the so-called summer of hell, all that train work they're doing in and out of Penn Station. They're doing it during the week, weekdays. Usually they try to do this stuff on the weekends only. What does it mean for us? Well, so far, not that bad. Not that bad, but today is only day two. We have with us the MTA board member, Scott Reckler. Nice to have you on Good Day New York. It's great to be here. By Thank the way, you. you've only been on the job with the MTA two weeks or so? Two or three weeks, that's okay, right. Okay, so your background is you were with the Port Authority for how long? I was five and a half years on the Port Authority board. Okay, and your background is real estate? Commercial real estate, one of the largest owners of office and residential in the New York metro area. All right, so you just got there. We can't blame you for much of anything right. if things well, go we wrong, can't. but so, so far, <laughs> what are they saying around the uh, MTA at the top level about the progress so far? Well, you said a good first day, but remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And, you know, with any marathon, if you train well and you do good planning, you can sort of get through it. And I think the governor and the leadership of the MTA and the MTA team members deserve a lot of credit for putting a good, comprehensive plan in place and communicating it to the, the public. Public, and I think the public and the ridership deserve a lot of credit for hearing about it and adjusting their commutes. Now the question is what happens on day two and as we continue through this marathon. So you're, you're a little nervous that things could, you know, become the, the summer of hell, right? I think you're, you have to be naive to assume that it's going to be smooth sailing for the next two months. And it may not even be two months. It may go longer than two months because while Amtrak says they're going to get this work done in two months, it's a difficult job. And who knows if they're going to get it really done in that, in that time period. And let's say certain commuters decide to stay home on Monday. And now they start in coming back into the, into the mix. So I think what needs to happen, and I think Joe Lode is uh, doing a great job of this, is take a step back, see what's working, what's not working. So we saw a big spike. Uh, at Hunter's Point Terminal yesterday. They've increased the trains this morning by seven more trains to accommodate that extra 90 percent uh, passenger ridership there. And so you got to keep doing what's working, what's not working, and then emphasize that and adjust. Earlier this week, Senator Schumer had concerns about a big pot of money that is not being spent where potentially it could be spent. Here's the senator. I am here tonight because there's a pot of money that could be used. But the MTA and Amtrak are busy fighting. There's $430 million sitting there that could be used to repair the East River tunnels. And that was the cause of one of the disruptions in service last month. And if they use that money for the East River tunnels, they can use other money to fix up, begin fixing up Penn Station. So we asked Joe Lode about this yesterday. Quite frankly, he didn't know what the senator was talking about. He had no idea, uh, said he would get back to us. What's going on here? So let's take a step back. We are in a transportation crisis right now, whether it's the, long, the what's happening in Penn Station and the impact of Long Island Railroad and New Jersey Transit, what's happening on the subways, so we can't ignore that either. We have to put aside political infighting and parochial interest. And if there's money to be spent, we've got to find a way to get it spent fast and fix the system as quickly but as possible. But is there money there that the MTA was not aware of or was not using? In my two weeks of the job, I don't know the answer specifically, but if there is, we've got to find a way to break through it, and I'm glad that Senator Schumer is focused on it, and let's try to find a way to get it into the system as you quickly know, as possible. You know, a lot of people are so frustrated with the MTA. They just think it's this big bureaucratic organization right. that nothing seems to get done and that things just get lost in the abyss. How do we cut through that? I mean, we're in a crisis situation here in New York City. Right. Well, I, I, you have to, you can't disagree with that perception of the MTA. And again, being a newcomer, that's what I see as well. The way you got to break through the crisis is bring in leadership. And I think the governor has said, I want accountability for this. Brought in Joe Loda. He's given Joe 30 days to come up with the first report for reorganizing the MTA structure, which is archaic. And then another 60 days to come up with an overall plan to fix the system. So it requires that level of focus and attention uh, as we go through the situation. We know the frontline MTA workers are out there working hard. Back to the leadership. You're part of the leadership. Joe Loda is. We were struck yesterday. There are a lot of volunteers. Joe Loda is essentially a volunteer. You, and I think it's great, but you're essentially a volunteer. This is a part-time gig, uh, even less than. You meet how often with your fellow board members? Right, so it's a couple times a month. A couple of times a month at night. Um, and during the day. It's, 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 listen, at the end of the day, it, New York has a long history for business leaders taking on civic responsibility. 
I think it's critical, and, and the business community at large, we recognize this transit crisis. At the end of the day, this is about quality of life. Why is the New York economy performing well? Because people from around the world want to live here. If they can't commute to work, if they can't get affordable housing, if there isn't public safety, they're not going to want to live here. And so we all have to chip in and recognize this is a problem for our long-term vitality. But, but do, do you think like the, the, the board members need to be more than volunteers? Because uh, this is a full-time crisis. This is not something that gets solved a few times a month but in a meeting, right. correct? It, listen, I, 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 there's a question as to do these board structures make it too opaque and who's accountable and who's ultimately accountable. Let's be clear that Governor Cuomo said, I'm prepared to be accountable. I'm responsible for making sure this system works. He puts Joe Loda in there. He's even asked for more seats on the board. I think that's great. I think there's a crisis. He's willing to grab that crisis, and I think we as a, as a board need to support uh, the elected official that the people uh, put in office to say, I want to be accountable and I want to fix the problem. Scott Reckler, how often do you ride the train? I ride the train at least five times a week. Five times a week. And uh, tell us real quick a little bit about yourself. You have made a big name for yourself in real estate. Is it true that you are friendly with the Trumps? Well, I've known historically Jared Kushner. I wouldn't say I'm friendly uh, with the Trumps. I gave them some advice on infrastructure when they were going through their transition team. Uh, you know, my my company is all New York Metro, so uh, we have a company that's got $15 billion of office and residential product in the New York metropolitan area. So the vitality of this region uh, is in everything I do. I've lived and breathed New York since I was born. and. Uh, and so, you know, I'll, you, know, you asked the question, why do this? Because I'm as committed and invested to this community as anyone else could be. Thank goodness. Can you boil down what kind of advice he gave to Jared Kushner on the infrastructure? Uh, you know, listen, there's the, the same advice I'll give to everyone. There is no silver bullet solution. It's going to require money. And we need to recognize that we've underinvested in infrastructure. And that's why we're in the problem we're facing in Amtrak and around the country. And we have to find ways to invest in our infrastructure going forward. Scott Reckler, if you see him on the train, Say hi. Terrific. Fair enough? Fair enough. Thank no. you. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you very much, Thank you for, you much, for your sir. work and your commitment. All right. Hey, a lot of folks are taking the boats these days. We'll be